Hello students, today we're going to be learning about how the cell makes proteins. And again, this is a central dogma of molecular biology. We talked about how DNA directs the building of the human body and all of your traits. Basically, it goes like this. DNA goes to RNA, goes to protein. And then that protein works in your body to reveal all your traits, or a specific trait. Um, so we're going to start with uh, this worksheet. This is the worksheet that you need to complete. Uh, by the end of this PowerPoint. So as you follow along, you're going to complete all of this as I go through the PowerPoint all the way to the very end. Okay, so here, let's get started. All right, the central dogma. Again, central dogma is, uh, it goes in this way, and DNA to RNA. Uh, you know DNA is double-stranded to RNA, which is single-stranded. Remember, what we're doing is we're not copying all thousands of genes. We're just copying one gene. So we're only going to open it up in a small area, which is the coding region. That just means the area that has the gene, the instructions for making one protein, just one. And once we have RNA, um, then we're going to make um, protein. Remember, a protein is made up of amino acids, and you re really can't see them here, but there's a bunch of amino acids all over the place in here. Remember, DNA to RNA is transcription. It's not replication because replication means you're copying all of DNA and making an exact copy. We're not doing that. We're just making a single-stranded copy of one gene. And then um, RNA to protein is translation because we're going to go from one language to another. So stop the video and uh, make sure that you get this into your handout. Okay, let's go. The word central just means uh, main or important. And dogma means belief or principle. And this is the main belief of how organisms are built. The main belief of molecular biology, which is how organisms are built from this molecule of DNA. So here we go again. Right now we're going to focus on the very first part, which is transcription. So that's our goal for right now, transcription. Again, transcription comes from the word transcribe, which means that you're going to copy uh, something in another way. So go ahead, write that down in your handout. And for example, if I'm not going to copy it exactly, but if you look at these notes here, um, we're going to transcribe them. And um, so what do we get? We get um, what it says there. But notice we're not going to copy everything. We're going to sort of copy it, but in, in a different way. So we didn't, it's not an exact copy. So why do we make a new copy? Why, are, why don't we just send DNA out of, outside? Well, DNA, if we send it outside, remember, it's, if DNA goes outside, it's going to run into maybe a, a lysosome get destroyed or, or something like that. So DNA cannot leave the nucleus. Right? Help, I can't get out, right? DNA can't leave. It cannot. We have, to, we have to protect it as much as we can. So how can we get the message to the ribosome? Well, the answer is mRNA. So let's make mRNA. Again, let's start transcription. So first you have RNA polymerase, which is the enzyme. Now students always ask me, I'm getting confused with RNA polymerase and DNA polymerase. Just remember that it's named after what it creates. DNA polymerase creates more DNA from DNA, so that's replication. We're not even in there right now. But RNA polymerase makes RNA, so it's going from DNA to RNA. It makes RNA. So first thing is RNA polymerase unwinds the DNA, so let's go ahead and do that. There you go, so it unwinds it. Once it opens it up, and remember it starts at the promoter region, and, and usually it's called uh, TATA region, T-A-T-A-A. -A -A. So you can kind of remember that. Every, wherever it finds that signal, that's where it's going to start the gene coding. And that's just a very popular. We call it, call it a TATA box. Basically, it's just like a, a cue, a point where you know you're going to start, RNA, um, you're going to start transcription. And then um, RNA polymerase is going to add nucleotides in the 5 to 3 prime direction. Now, these numbers, students ask me, what is that? I'm getting confused. Well, just remember that it just tells you the order. Um, it has to do with something in chemistry you're going to learn later, but we're not going to deal with carbon atoms so much right now. But just need to know that. Remember, DNA is anti-parallel. Um, one side goes in one direction, the other side goes in the opposite. You do need to know that DNA, uh, that when we make RNA, goes in the 5 to 3 prime. So in other words, if this is right here, the 3 to 5, then we're going to add RNA polymerase in the opposite direction. So follow along. Uh, you also remember that the the uh, we have a U instead of T every time we build RNA. And then we start, and RNA polymerase is moving along. And again, notice it used this strand. This is called the template strand. And again, and it's going to build it in the 
five to three prime direction and it just did that again from left to right the five to three prime not three to five so five to three prime and then DNA is going to return to the double helix and mRNA is going to leave the nucleus so let's watch that mRNA is leaving the nucleus going out to the ribosome and DNA is going to close up reattach the hydrogen bond it's going to coil up again spin again and uh, let's keep going so that's transcription we make RNA right because DNA couldn't leave the nucleus now we're going to make a protein so now this is called translation remember it has to do with one language to another so here we go to translate something means to write something in a different language and for example hey what's up what do you want to eat we're going to translate that one language to another hola que tal ¿Qué quieres comer? Okay, translation. Now, so why do we need to translate RNA? I mean, if we're making a protein, we're going from RNA to protein. Well, it's really two different languages involved. RNA is made up of nucleotides, as you can see here. And these nucleotides have these bases, these letters. We always talk about A, U, G, C. So we're going to read RNA and somehow use that code to build something, you know, from a different language. Because proteins are made from amino acids, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to go to that language of amino acids. So that's what we mean by translate. Okay, so when we're translating, we're going to make a protein. So mRNA leaves the nucleus and goes to the ribosome, of course. Because that, you know, if you're wondering why, what's the ribosome do? Well, it makes proteins. That's what we're trying to make. Remember, proteins make our traits. You know, they build our body. They make our heart, our skin. They're found everywhere in your everywhere all over the place okay and so let's go get the RNA out of the nucleus remember it's called mRNA because it's a messenger it's coming it's sending the message from the nucleus where DNA is at out to the ribosome it's carrying that message a copy of a gene so this is the ribosome mRNA we're gonna pretend it just arrived at the ribosome so the ribosome has to find where to begin just like just like RNA polymerase had to find where to start transcribing by finding the promoter region, remember the TATA box region, and then it starts and goes all the way to the end. Well, the ribosome has to do the same thing. And so the ribosome looks for what's called the start signal, not the promoter, but the start signal. Remember that difference. And the start signal sequence is AUG. You're probably wondering, AUG, why is it three letters? Well, you know, the ribosome reads it in three-letter code. We call the codon. And so let's look. Can you find where AUG is? And you always lift, read it left to right. And then I look, and then I see right there. There it goes. There's the AUG region. That's where we start. I always tell students, a way to remember this is just think about when we start school. We always start in August. That's an easy way to remember that it's AUG, August. Um, so that, that's, that's a good way to remember. So the ribosome moves to that part, and, and go ahead. We start now. So what's going to happen? The ribosome reads the RNA strand in triplets called codons. We said that. So remember, we're going to move every three, and we're going to put an amino acid there because that's what we're building, um, a protein made of amino acids. So we go to the first one, and uh, we, we move over to CUU, and we another RNA called tRNA matches the codon to the right amino acid, So and it brings it to the ribosome. So let's watch this. There goes tRNA, and it's going to bring an amino acid to that right location where it belongs, CUU. So CUU must code for LEU. It's a specific amino acid called leucine. You're going to get to know these names and everything, and we're going to do that later. But right now, just remember that there's 20 different amino acids that we bring, and they help build our proteins. And amino, ac amino acids connect to form long, a long chain called a protein. So let's keep going. Um, you're going to see this process continue. So that tRNA leaves, and then we notice that we're, the ribosome slides over to the right. Then another tRNA lands and lands at the spot carrying the right amino acid. In this case, it's proline, P-R-O. Notice we, use, we usually abbreviate it with three letters up here. So again, remember, this is tRNA. Um, it transfer RNA, brings the amino acids to the ribosome, and these are the amino acids um, it's bringing. And we got to connect them. And we connect them with something called a peptide bond, which is a special bond between uh, two amino acids. And then the, RNA, the tRNA leaves, 
the ribosome, as you guessed it, is going to slide to the right. Okay, there we go. And then what's going to happen next? TRNA bring in the next amino acid lands. What do we do? Connect the amino acids with a peptide bond. TRNA leaves. What's going to happen next? The ribosome slides over three more. Remember, it reads it in codons, triplets. And then what's going to happen next? Another tRNA lands, bring in this amino acid in there, and then a peptide bond is formed. And then we get translation ends at the stop codon. And the stop codon, you're going to remember this. Um, these are the three stop codons, the three signals that tell you that you're done translating. UAA, UAG, UGA. And it looks like we reached UAA. You see it right there? That means we're done. So what's going to happen? We, we're done. The ribosome is going to detach. It's going to leave. RNA is probably going to get destroyed. We already did the job. And then we're going to be left with, right now it's really a protein or not. It's not really a protein yet. It's an amino acid chain or they call it a polypeptide chain because there's many, more than three bonds, right? Um, but eventually it's going to fold up. And this picture is not showing it, but it'll fold up into a certain shape. And Proteins are not just four amino acids long. This is an exaggeration, um, or actually under, you know, this is underestimating what the power of these proteins are. But you know, protein can have thousands, sometimes, maybe a couple hundred or maybe small amount of amino acids, but it can have up to thousands of amino acids in complex um, arrangement or order. So we're going to learn about how to read this now. This. And this is going to be in the next video.